Section 6.2, The Law of Cosines, Part 2 of the Notes. Example 3. Two airplanes leave an airport at the same time on different runways. One flies directly north at 400 miles per hour. The other plane flies at a bearing of north 75 degrees east at 350 miles per hour. How far apart will the airplanes be after two hours? Now, word problem here. Make sure that when you draw your triangle that you label things as an airplane and label the information that we know so that we can kind of see what's going on visually. I want you to pause this video and I want you to try to draw the picture and then restart the video and see if we have the same triangle. Okay, so let's start with I have angle A is my airport and then angles B and C are planes 1 and 2. Plane 1 went straight north, so that's why I drew it right above the airport. And then plane 2 went north 75 degrees east bearing, so I drew it off to the left. And that makes an angle of 75 degrees for A. Now my side lengths, side C and side B, I found by looking at the fact that um, my airplanes went 400 miles per hour and 350 miles per hour. And after two hours, I would need to double that. So that's where I got the 800 and the 700 from. We want to know how far apart the airplanes will be after two hours. So the side that I'm trying to find is side A. That's the side in between my two planes. In order to find side A, I'm using the first of the three formulas for law of cosine since it starts with a squared and I've plugged in everything that I know. When I plug the right side into my calculator I get 840,122.67 and now I'm going to square root both sides and I get my answer of 917 miles apart. One important note that I want to point out to you is if you start a problem off using law of cosines, so maybe you solve for an angle or a side, and then you want to move to using law of sines, well, you can only do that if you are solving for a side or an acute angle with law of sines. So the problem that we run into is after using law of cosines once, if we switch over to law of sines, we cannot find the largest angle that way using law of sines. So if you're worried about this being an issue, then my advice to you would just be to, if it's a law of cosines problem, use law of cosines the entire time and don't use law of sines at all. But if you're careful about it, you can use the law of sines as long as you're not using law of sines to find the largest angle. Next, we're gonna look at another formula for area of a triangle. This is Heron's formula. So a couple things to note in here. Our side lengths are little a, little b, little c. And s is one half of the perimeter of the triangle. So this is a formula we're going to use when we know all three of our side lengths. Example 4 using Heron's formula. Find the area of a triangle with sides 6, 16, and 18. Round to the nearest square meter. I want you to pause your video and I want you to try this one on your own. So start by finding S and then plugging in what you know into Heron's formula and getting out the area. For S, I found 20. And then when I plugged everything I knew into the area formula, I got out an area of 47. And I should have put meters squared on there. 